One of the places I visited this summer was Independence Rock, located in central Wyoming. While seldom seen by travelers today, except for those who go out of their way to find the impressive granite monolith, Independence Rock was a welcome site to over a half million westbound travelers in the early and middle 1800s. Before the advent of the Transcontinental Railroad, the primary route of westward travelers ran right past this spot. Those following the Oregon Trail, the Mormon Trail, and the California Trail would all come this way, as would Pony Express riders. Today, Independence Rock is located on Wyoming State Route 220, about 60 miles southwest of Casper. If you drive the route between Casper and Rollins, you'll go right past this intriguing piece of U.S. history. Independence Rock was named in honor of July 4th being Independence Day. Some say the naming came as early as 1824, though general credit is given to William Sublette, a fur trader who was part of an Independence Day celebration here in 1830. The rock has also been known by other names, such as the Register of the Desert. It gained this secondary name because many of the half million immigrants who passed this way would place their names, dates, and town names on the rock. Early visitors would use paint, soot, tar, and even buffalo grease to leave their mark. These inscriptions have all but disappeared over the past 200 years. There are still many, many inscriptions that remain, however, from immigrants who used hammers, chisels, and iron bars to leave their mark in the hard granite rock. In 1843, John C. Fremont, a well-known explorer, passed by Independence Rock and commented on the number of inscriptions. In his journal, he stated that everywhere within six or eight feet of the ground, where the surface is sufficiently smooth, and in some places 60 or 80 feet above, the rock is inscribed with the names of travelers. Whenever I visit Independence Rock, I cannot help but to be impressed as it rises out of the rolling plains. The granite rock is weathered and covered in many places with lichens. It covers over 27 acres and walking around it takes more than a mile. Those who do choose to walk around it will do so mostly on uneven ground, following little more than a dirt path or a gravel walkway. In some places, though, you can walk along an abandoned and deteriorating road that used to run very close to the rock. The highest point at Independence Rock is 136 feet above the surrounding plains, and one can have a great view from the top. Climbing Independence Rock doesn't take any special equipment. It is not easy to climb, however. It does take time and effort to find a steady footing. You need to choose where you will climb, as there are no trail markings to aid you. Plus, at an elevation of about 6,000 feet, the exertion can be daunting. When I climb the rock, I find that ascending isn't nearly as difficult as coming back down. I'm on top of Independence Rock right now. Uh, I'm not at the highest point of Independence Rock. That's just a little bit off to my left over here. But I'm high enough that uh, I can see the countryside very well. This rock was a major, uh, not necessarily stopping point, but a navigational aid on the Pioneer Trail uh, that was followed to get to Oregon, to California, to Utah and later by the Pony Express route. Uh, this is, um, and I'm hoping that you're going to be able to hear me okay because it's quite windy up here, which is not unusual for this part of Wyoming. Directly behind me is uh, due west, and you, you can see Devil's Gate over there. 
Uh, if not, I'll make sure that uh, you get to see it in the video here. But uh, I'll also turn the camera around so that you can see where the pioneers would have come from as they were heading west. But they would often stay here, they would climb this rock, and they would carve their names and initials and dates into the rock. I am standing at the top of this, and all around me I can see these carvings in the rock here. Some of them going back to 1850, the 1840s. I mean, these are quite a bit further back than, uh, than what you might at first believe. Um, this is why it was often called the Register of the Desert. And people would carve their record that they came by here into this rock. So uh, let me show you around. I hope that you enjoy this, uh, this view. It was an interesting climb to get up here, but uh, now that I'm up here, I'm glad that I was able to do it. It's, uh, you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles uh, in every direction from up here, and uh, it gives quite a stunning view of this part of Wyoming. Perhaps a major reason that this spot is known as Independence Rock is because westward travelers understood that if they reached here by early July, they would have time to make it past the Rocky Mountains and, most likely, to their destination before the harsh winter weather set in. In other words, it was a welcome safety marker on their progress. The location is also significant for two other reasons. First, it is located approximately halfway between the Missouri River where many immigrants started their journey, and the Pacific Ocean. The second reason is, as I mentioned, because it marks the transition point between the North Platte and Sweetwater Rivers. As immigrants moved westward, their trails would follow the North Platte River and then, north of Independence Rock, transition to the Sweetwater. The trails would extend westward from here paralleling and often crossing the river for the next 200 miles until it was time to cross the Continental Divide at South Pass. Even though there are thousands of names inscribed on Independence Rock, today's visitors are prohibited by law from leaving their own names and dates. There have, however, been a multitude of markers and plaques placed on and around the rock to indicate its historic significance. One fascinating marker was placed by the Oregon-California Trails Association and tells the story of Ezra Meeker, who first traveled the Oregon Trail in 1852. He traveled back across the trail when he was 75 years old in 1906 and placed markers all along the trail. On his 1906 journey, he inscribed his name and date in Independence Rock. Independence Rock was designated a National Historic Landmark in early 1961 and is the first place in Wyoming placed on the National Register of Historic Places. Today, it is part of the Independence Rock State Historic Site. In post-pioneer times, the site has been the location for a wide variety of events. In past years, I have come here for both religious gatherings and for Boy Scout campouts. I'm not alone in those adventures, however. Each visit to the rock has left me not only with great memories, but filled me with recurring awe for those who traveled by this way so many years ago. I hope you enjoyed this short visit to Independence Rock. There's much more that could be said about the area, but if you ever find yourself traveling through this part of Wyoming, this is one place among many that you need to stop and visit.